What is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. My name is Brayden and this is my Wildman 3 inch Punisher Dream Sickle as I've called it. And uh, somebody requested that I do a video explaining how I set up my head in dual deployment with the E-Match in the tip. I figured I'd do one better and just kind of do an overall explanation of head in dual deployment and how I make it work and what better rocket to do so than the original head end deployment rocket, I believe. Anyway, the three inch Punisher was the first rocket that uh, Wildman put together with the signature head end dual deploy, courtesy of the two part G12 nose cone. This thing's flown a bunch of times. I don't even know how many times at this point. Uh, J250, K1100, K1275, J615. Uh, it's been as high as 12 and a half thousand feet and plan on flying it a bunch more if we can. If you're not familiar with head-end dual deployment, all that means is there's no payload tube, right? Uh, which is something that people run into a lot with rocketry. Um, the old traditional way of doing dual deployment is to have a second tube sitting up here on top of your coupler, and that's where your main parachute and everything, your recovery gear goes. But in head-end dual deployment, it just goes in the nose cone. And that's super efficient way for flying if you're doing performance oriented stuff and the two piece nose cones have made for some amazing minimum diameter projects and stuff like that. But we also see a lot of people stretching rockets that are meant to be head end dual deployment. And that just makes us so very sad. So please don't do that. The Punisher is such an optimum design when it comes to diameter versus length. And the fin shape's really good. Very high performance rocket. So stretching it really just it hinders the performance that this thing's built to have. It's like uh, driving a Hellcat, but you never take it out of valet mode. If you're going to do head and dual deployment, first of all, while we're here, let's talk about this. It's more shock cord out here. Um, I learned this lesson the hard way, and Wildman Tim uh, taught me the reason this happened, but if you are going to fly head and dual deployment, your drogue, put it right on your eye bolt or U bolt or whatever on the bottom of your electronics bay. If you put it further down the shock cord, this whole ensemble is going to hit your fins, it's going to crack them wide open, and you're going to be very sad about it. Trust me, that's what happened with my 4-inch Punisher. That's kind of a moot point because that thing is in the desert somewhere, uh, probably 10 feet underground. Anyway, let's take a look at how head and dual deploy is achieved, especially with this kit and this nose cone. Um, I don't know what the current nose cones look like, but this one does not have a lot of shoulder going into the upper section there, as you can see. So I do have three shear pins in the upper section. I don't run shear pins in the bottom section of this rocket at all. I never have. Um, it's gone way beyond mock and flown several times. I've never had a drag separation or anything like that. Why I didn't put any there, I don't know. I just usually don't with fin cans anyway. But uh, yeah, it just doesn't have any shear pins down there. It is what it is. If you want to put shear pins in, go ahead. But somebody wanted to know specifically how to set it up with dual deploy the way that I do. So, you know, I got my two altimeters in there. I believe there's a Stratologer and a MissileWorks RSD2. So here is a couple little tidbits of advice for head-end dual deployment success. First and foremost, use the thinnest shock cord you can get away with when you're putting this thing together. I actually have some wire out, but it looks like I have some E-matches in there still from the last flight. So these are fired. They're not live charges. Don't worry. Anyway. The upper section used to have the same 3 8 shock cord that I have down there, and I had a lot of issues getting the parachute out, understandably. So, I switched to this quarter inch Kevlar, which you can get from Wildman. It's got plenty of brake strength. I actually think this particular one might be a one bad hawk harness because it's got a swivel on it. Um, I don't know. I couldn't tell you honestly, but what I can tell you is that switching to the smaller Kevlar made the packing efficiency so much nicer and everything goes together super easy, but more importantly, it comes apart super easy. So I'm flying, I believe, a standard non-thin mill 50 inch or 52 inch, whatever the top flight chute size is in this thing. <laughs> the chute is burned to oblivion, but I still fly it because it still works. This is a really big parachute to be getting in that small of a size. You can see um, I actually burned through a Nomex protector on the first flight of this rocket. So the chute's still pretty burned up, but it is what it is. Again, it works. And uh, we just flew this at Airfest on a J and had full recovery and everything went fine. And then there you go. Nomex protector, again, a little burned hole in it. Um, as far as what you can do to prevent that, 
maybe use a bigger Nomex protector, but that's about all the advice I can give you. Anyway, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I make this happen. So first and foremost, obviously we're going to pack our parachute. And again, I'm not a parachute rigger. I've never been skydiving and I don't have any sort of insight on how to pa properly pack parachute most efficiently and make everything open smooth and nice. We did it with, uh, with our C9. We actually lined all the gores up and everything and made it come out nice and slow. But with stuff like this, it's really not the most imperative thing. In fact, um, what we do with our head-end rockets, at least my advice from Taylor, which I've found to be successful, um, is kind of against policy for packing high power parachutes, but you're about to see what that is. So I just kind of fold her up a couple times, long ways, get it pretty small, and then I fold it up this way, and then we keep folding, keep folding until we have a small little ball the end we roll it up and then this is where things get unkosher for a lot of high power people because this is how Taylor swears by his head and dual deployment stuff working you wrap it like the old Estes parachute trick around and this helps keep everything nice and contained obviously you don't want to wrap it so tight that it's not going to come out of the nose cone and then what we do is we're going to put that guy inside there because whatever way your charges are facing is where you're going to want to face your Nomex. You can see that hole in the Nomex. I'm probably going to replace this because this wouldn't uh, go too well. Get as much of the parachute hidden in the Nomex as you can and usually I'll have the rest of it packed already but I'll show you guys what I like to do also. In keeping the theme of trying to put as much stuff between the charge and the parachute as possible I like to put the shock cord in first which also has helped um, my dad's level 3 was a head-end dual deploy flight with a very stubby 6 inch rocket and he put all of his shock cord in the nose first even though his charges were on the bottom sitting on top of the electronics bay and uh, that helped as the shock cord was pulling out kind of assist in getting the parachute out of the thing. Make a little shield of Kevlar around the parachute. Again, I usually have this stuff pre-packed already. And then this is my specialty. Charges, leave them very long. I didn't do it on this flight, but a lot of times what I'll do is wrap excess around the eye bolt or U bolt or whatever I have there. That way, if it does get some tension on it, it's not gonna be pulling straight on the altimeter. Instead, it'll be pulling on that eye bolt. Then all we do, stuff those guys in there. Charges and all. Follow that with our recovery gear. And you wanna make sure it's not super tight and fighting you on the way in. All right, before we continue, you could probably see I cleaned it up, but there was some black powder residue on the table that came out. It's also all over the coupler. I do this between pretty much every flight. Um, it's okay, none of those charges have anything in them anymore. Just make sure you're getting all the black powder residue off the coupler, especially with something with this tight of a fit. Otherwise, you're going to have a real, real bad time trying to get everything to align. So I'm going to clean the inside of the nose cone, clean the coupler, that way we can just slide it together. Of course when you do this you always want to make sure everything's dry before you start sliding things together again. Now with everything all cleaned up, we're just going to find our marks, the black sharpie dot to line these two guys up, get everything all concise. I should really take the uh, quick link out of there, but there you go. That's it. Throw some shear pins in there and uh, you're ready to go. I have, since I started doing the uh, e-matches at the tip, I'm at 100% success rate for head and dual deploy, which is incredible because before I was not even close to that. I think I'd only ever got a shoot to completely come out and inflate head and dual deploy once. So yeah, that's the best advice I can give you is pack everything uh, as tightly as possible, but 
make sure it's small enough to stay relatively loose within the nose cone itself and uh, put your charges at the tip. Obviously with a bigger rocket it's a lot easier like the V2 is no problem. I could probably fit two of those Cert 3XLs that I fly in that thing in there and still have room to pack everything. But uh, yeah, let's see if it'll... Uh... There you go. A little tug necessary, but uh, I promise the black powder is going to be more than enough for that effect. But hey, thank you so much for watching. My name is Braden. This is Rocket Vlogs. You can see I got my ugly rocket sweater on. If you got one, hopefully it gets there in time before Christmas because mine showed up almost two weeks later than it was supposed to arrive. So uh, sorry about that. I'm sure they're swamped Christmas time and everything like that. So by the time you're seeing this, it's way too late to get one in time for Christmas. There is other merch though. You can check it out at rocketvlogs.com. And also, channel memberships are new, $2.99 or $4.99, you can join the channel and that helps support the video content coming out and all the projects we're working on and all the traveling, the launches I do and everything. As well as Patreon, you're seeing those names roll across the screen, those are my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so very much and uh, that's going to do it for this episode of Rocket Vlogs. And oh, don't forget to subscribe to Taylor's channel, the Rocket channel. He's doing a Rocket giveaway, link is in the description. Hit subscribe, hit the like, do all that stuff and uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching Rocket Vlogs. I'll see you guys next time.